Welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Australian beef exporters may be in for a windfall after last week's discovery of a dairy cow with BSE, or mad cow disease, in the USA. South Korea immediately announced restrictions on US beef imports, although Japan, Australian beef's largest importer, was not yet expected to follow suit. The Land newspaper quoted David Farley, the chief executive of the Australian Agricultural Company, the nation's largest cattle company, as saying the news from California would immediately benefit Australian exporters who had been under pressure from the high dollar and last year's live trade controversy. The immediate effect would be that Australian beef would be sought after, Mr Farley said. The news should tighten global supply while each importing country assessed its situation. If you believed everything you read in suburban butcher shops and on steakhouse menus, Black Angus beef would have Hereford beef on the run in market terms. But American Hereford CEO Craig Huffhines said last week that US Herefords had staged a big comeback with bull sale averages topping 10,000 greenbacks and commercial producers enjoying big returns from Hereford genetics. He said that in a three-year trial, US Hereford side calves had delivered a $30 advantage over Angus calves. So the eyes of Australia's Hereford producers will be on the Wodonga sale yards this week to see if the American experience will be reflected here. Matt Tinkler from Elders Albury says the upcoming sale of 2,000 Hereford steers, heifers, cows and calves at Wodonga should deliver strong results. Next week we see a bit of a week of uh, Herefords in Wodonga, I guess you'd say, uh, Tony. We've, uh, we've got coming up the national and annual Hereford show and sale at Wodonga Selling Complex, where we see on an annual basis the Hereford Society sponsored sale, Hereford breeders across Australia come together on Wednesday for a show, and then Thursday is a bull sale, Hereford bull sale. Friday, something a bit unique this year, Friday we've moved into, we're, we're running a commercial Hereford sale uh, run by elders only at, uh, at the Wodonga sale yards where we'll see 2,000 commercial Hereford um, females and, uh, and yearling and, and weaner cattle. Oh look, it's huge for the Hereford breeders. Um, you certainly see all the Hereford breeders and, and, Her and commercial Hereford breeders across the country come to this show and sale on the, on the Wednesday, Thursday to see the latest genetics um, and, where, and where the breed's headed. Um, you certainly see the best of the breeding. Elsewhere in Australia, there is downward pressure on beef cattle prices with sale yards full to bursting as producers attempt to sell cattle in numbers before the winter break. Agriculture forecaster Abares has predicted the national canola crop area will increase by 5% this season because of an oilseed shortage in Europe. Destructive floodwaters in the eastern states this summer has left the ground rich with subsoil moisture and perfect for canola which is fetching more than $500 a tonne. Flood affected farmers are now planning to cash in on the high commodity price for oilseed with planting in New South Wales forecast to rise by 40% from last year. China's ambassador to Canberra, Chen Yuming, has warned the Australian government not to impose new restrictions on Chinese investment in local agriculture. Mr Chen's comments coincide with a major policy change by the National Farmers Federation calling for closer scrutiny and a mandatory registry of foreign investors buying large tracts of Australian farmland. As reported here last week, the Victorian Farmers Federation also voted for federal government approval to be required for all sales of farms valued at more than $5 million, lowering the formal approval threshold from its $244 million trigger. Mr Chen believed local concerns about Chinese companies buying large numbers of Australian farms were unwarranted. He said both the Chinese and Australian governments should actively encourage more investment in this area. And the Chinese don't just want our land. An estimated 100,000 heifers from Australia, New Zealand and Uruguay are this year destined for China. To satisfy increased consumer demand for milk products, China has become the world's most important buyer of dairy cows, driving up prices for calves worldwide and putting pressure on other markets such as alfalfa and bull semen. 
Since 2009, China has imported nearly 250,000 live heifers. But our farmers exporting their prized heifers are worried that in coming years, China could go from customer to rival in the global milk market. According to one Victorian dairy farmer, it was building the herds of our competitors. It was like selling the family silver. You only do it once.